Let's start at the beginning. The very beginning of the Bible where it says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible tells us that there's a creator God who put everything around us into motion. This, of course, our mind bears witness to because the order of the universe, the fine-tuning of the universe, how could that all be an accident? In fact, how could something come out of nothing? It really takes a lot of faith to be an atheist, to believe that this is all by accident. The Bible tells us clearly that there's a God who created us, and he's a God of love. And he created you and I so that we might know him, enjoy him, have fellowship with him, and that's why we're here. Ah, but things got into uh, trouble mode very quickly, according to the Bible, because something called sin came into the world. And when sin came into the world, disobedience to God, disobedience to his commands and his way of doing things, which was always going to be for our good, that caused a separation between the creator and the creation, between a loving God and the people uh, who were created to enjoy him and walk with him. That separation causes uh, what is called cosmic loneliness, that you can be surrounded by thousands of people, you can be making a million dollars a year, but yet there's something inside of us that is not quite right. I'm out of tune. There's some distance between me and what I'm supposed to be. That's where loneliness and lack of peace and joy comes into humanity. We see that everywhere around us, don't we? People can have pleasure, sex, drugs, making money, buying a bigger home. All of that gives pleasure. Ah, but it doesn't save us from depression and loneliness. That's why some of the richest people in the world are doing the most drugs and running in all the wrong places to try to find some kind of inner peace, inner satisfaction. Well, God loved us, loves us, saw all of that, and he bridged the gap between him and us by sending a very special bridge, his own one and only son, Jesus Christ. He was sent, the Bible tells us, to bridge the gap, close the separation between the loving creator and you and I. Let me read it right from God's word. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. There it is. God loves us so much, saw us not only straying from him, not enjoying his presence and fellowship with him, but rebelling against him. Get out of here. I don't want God. I don't want to know about God. I don't want to know about his plan for my life. But God, in patience and mercy, sent his son, Jesus Christ. Notice the Bible says that he so loved the world. He meant not the trees and the rivers and the oceans, but he loved the people in the world. So that's the first thing about Christianity, the very beginning of Christianity 101. God loves you. God loves me. But I don't love God. I don't want to know about God, minister. It doesn't matter. God loves us unconditionally. And he sent his one and only son to come to earth to do what? Yes, he taught. Yes, he did miracles to prove who he was. But that's not why Jesus came to earth. He came to earth to die on a cross as a substitute for our sins, to make atonement for our sins. What does that mean? Well, Jesus lived a perfect life because he was perfect man yet perfect God, born of a virgin. For the first 30 years of his life, he laid low. We don't know much about what he was doing, except he was a carpenter's son. But at 30, he began to proclaim the message that his father had sent him to give to the world. And at about 33, 33 and a half, he ended up being betrayed by one of his own disciples, and he was put to death on a cross. But that was all foreplanned and pre-known by God. And as he hung on that cross, the Bible says he was punished for our sins, my sins, your sins. He didn't have any sins. Nobody could punish him for anything. Nobody had an accusation against him that could hold water. He was innocent, and yet he hung on the cross. 
to be punished for my sins so I wouldn't have to be punished for my sins, but I could one day go to be with him in heaven, having all my sins washed away by the blood that he shed. Now, the Bible says in the Old Testament that the life is in the blood. That's why on Passover night, an innocent lamb was killed and the blood put over the doorposts of the Hebrew homes. And God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. You won't be judged. Even though you've done wrong things, I won't judge you. Why? Not because of your tears or that you're called Jews or that you have made promises to do better. No, I'm going to pass over you. And for one reason, the blood that was shed. If the blood of lambs, the Bible tells us, had that power back in the book of Exodus, just think what the blood of Jesus Christ uh, put upon the, the doorposts of our hearts has in God's sight. This is what salvation is about. God forgives us for Christ's sake. Christ was my substitute. He took my sins and died for them so I wouldn't have to be punished. No wonder they call it good news. Jesus told his disciples after he rose from the dead, tell everyone about the good news of my salvation. So, my friend, I want you to know that this is the great gift that's being offered to all of us, this salvation, that we would not perish. What does that mean? We would not perish but have everlasting life. Perish means their punishment, being estranged from God permanently for all eternity. So I want to remind you that one billion years from now, you and I are all going to be somewhere. Unless you think Jesus Christ is the biggest liar, biggest hoax ever foisted upon planet Earth. I doubt that, given all the wonderful teaching and things that he did. No, Jesus said and told us clearly, life doesn't end at death. In fact, Jesus said life begins at death. Eternal life with him or an eternal existence away from him in a place of punishment. I didn't make this up. This is not my idea. It's the idea and the truth of the creator who said that he loved the world so much that he offers salvation as a free gift. So you can choose today, and I can choose today if I wasn't a believer. I chose one day. I chose one day to accept the gift. Whoever believes in him, the Bible says, shall have eternal life. What does believe in him mean? It simply means that you reach out your hand and accept the gift. You know, at Christmas time when I was growing up, uh, we would get gifts. And my mom and dad or relatives would give me a gift. And they would hand it to me. But the gift meant nothing to me. I couldn't open it until I received it and took it and opened it. Then it was mine. And that's what God asks of you and me today. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Open your heart, open your life and say, I receive this forgiveness of sin. I receive your love. I receive your plan for my life. You know better. All the roads I've gone down end up dead-ended. I receive the gift that you planned for me before I was ever born. I wonder if I could close this session, didn't plan to do it this way, but if I could close this session by just praying for anyone listening to me who has maybe not, never said the yes to God. That's as simple as it, as it is. Jesus said, except you become like a little child, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. So here's what it's all about. Like a child, let's today say, yes, Father, I receive the gift you have for me, the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? Dear God, I pray that the people who are listening to me at this very moment, wherever they might be, might confess their sins and admit that they have broken God's law, that they have not lived according to your way and even their own conscience. So we say we're sorry, we repent, and we ask you to forgive us for Christ's sake. We believe that you sent him to die for us, and today we confess our sins, but we also confess that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world and we receive his salvation today. Please, God, come and make us the people you plan for us to be. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you.